Hi everyone. It's so great to connect with you again. And uh, I hope you are doing well throughout these tough times. And I'm really, really excited to share some of the things that I'm learning from my amazing friend, yoga teacher, Mira Rao. So when I go, hi Mira. When Hello. I, <laughs> when I go through tough times in life, you know, what, what gives me strength is to look around and see who can I learn from? Things that can empower me through tough times. And Mira is definitely one of those persons, one of those people, one of those magical teachers that I go to. So Mira is um, a yoga teacher. She's a resilience life coach. She's an MBA and she's the creator of Embodied Living, Embodied Leading program. And she's going to tell us a bit more about all these things. So welcome, Mira. So good to have you here. Thank you, Selena. It's so good to be here. I really appreciate it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So, uh, and if you uh, if you can hear some funny noises coming from my background, that's my dog. <laughs> How often do we hear that these days? It's my kids. It's my dog. Oh, you're on mute. Classic phrases <laughs> of the twenty right. twenties. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, they add a bit of spice to life. Those things, don't they? Mm. So, Mira. Um, you call yourself a resilience coach. So can you tell us a bit more, you know, why do you choose to call yourself a resilience coach? Mm. What does it really mean to you? And what do you want people to know about that word resilience? Great question. So the concept, I'm just gonna tell you, it's getting warm in here, mm. under the spotlight. The, <laughs> the idea of resilience, I think it, I first came across it from Taoism. So it's that idea of not being rigid, of being mm -hmm. able to flex and bend with things, but also not being so floppy that you've got no power. So when I first experienced this in my life, this reality of what it meant to be resilient, of being able to be like grounded and centered in myself and able to feel my feelings. So for me, it's really about this. It's about the flexibility and being a yoga teacher, it's no surprised yeah. that I'm going to go after something that's, you know, really yeah. about yeah. this. And I see it everywhere. I see it in yoga. I see it in these spiritual traditions and I see it, which I, you know, I imagine we'll talk about this in a little bit about mm -hmm. the nervous system. Mm -hmm. It's this idea of strength and flexibility mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. In yoga, there's a, a phrase, stiram sukham asanam. So the postures are an expression of that balance of strength and softness and I think yeah. to me that's the key of how we can meet the challenges and not block them or collapse under the weight of them our general challenges of of life great so so you know people when people say the word resilience they think that you need to be tough mm. and you know and like uh, take the punches go with the punches what do you say to them Mm. I actually had this happen the other day, uh, a conversation on social media and somebody posted something about, I'm so sick and tired of being, uh, <clears throat> being held up as an example of resilience. I just want, I actually want to have a chilled out time. You know, I don't want to have to be so strong to deal with all the challenges of life. And I get that, you know, if you've come from a trauma background and you've had perhaps what might feel like or might even be quite a significant amount of challenges and knocks yeah. and hard knocks that you would want that of course of course and we would want that for anyone that had been through that but I think if we look around at the reality of existence of life on this planet crap happens right mm. it, it's just it's not like I'm unique in having to deal with difficult things everybody yeah, Everybody. especially now, look at this, the whole world. <laughs> exactly, exactly, yeah. right? We yeah. all have a burden to bear. And you, I, I'm so glad you bring that up because I think if we don't, what I see playing out quite frequently on the public stage as well is if people aren't doing this work internally for themselves individually, they show up in the workplace, they show up in politics, they show up in the yeah. public discourse, 
not well regulated, not calm, not able to think rationally and clearly, yeah. not resilient, reactive, panicky. Mm. You know, we've seen this over and over over the last year. Mm. Absolutely. So someone that says that, I can totally understand it. Totally, mm. totally, totally. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I've got some noises going. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, is yeah. that my resilient alarm? I'll just turn that up. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I'll talk about what that is later. Um, so it's not about, I think the way I explained it in the beginning as well answers that question a little bit. It's not about being tough. Mm -hmm. It's not about having to always be strong. Some of the practices of, of a resilient community are leaning on each other, mm -hmm. you know, are welcoming in that help. But it's mm -hmm. about being that balance. It's about being balanced and being flexible, like I talked about at the beginning, so that we can actually find the resources that we need to meet the challenges that they just come. We can't choose that, you know? Yeah. Yep. So what I hear, it's like being able to tap in, in uh, the, your strength. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Under any circumstances. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And what I've noticed is, and what I love about, you know, your approach, because it's such a beautiful blend of uh, Eastern mysticism and modern, you know, science, and you, you do it with such a uh, wisdom and integrity. And I have heard you mentioning the word a nervous system often yes so how the yeah <laughs> and you know being an introvert and then science nerd i like it <laughs> ah, so yeah. i i couldn't wait to ask you how does the nervous system fit in this idea of resilience great so i believe the training that i've had the practice that i've had the work that i've done both internally on myself and with people over the years I really believe that what we call emotions, a lot of our experiences are actually actions of the nervous system. So mm -hmm. when we're needing to feel safe, we're needing to be protected, we're trying to interpret, and they've shown this, the neurobiology that's going on, neuroception, before anything happens on our conscious mind, our nervous system has scanned, tracked, and made an assessment of threat or safety before yeah. anything else happens. Yeah. So the nervous system itself, has a capacity to be resilient. So for me, it starts there. The, the mm -hmm. core of, like you said, there's a blend so mystically, mm -hmm. you know, our core could be spiritual, but I think in our human experience, the core of our experience starts with our biology, with our felt mm -hmm. experience of the mm -hmm. world. And when the nervous system, so the nervous system needs the same kind of attention. So we understand postures for how they make our bodies stronger and more flexible. Yeah. They do the same thing to the nervous system. So when we want to, there's a thing called the window of tolerance. So mm -hmm. as we begin to work with building a resilient nervous system, we allow ourselves <clears throat> to be able to handle, to go up the nervous system, to be a little bit more excitable, to go down the nervous system, to be a bit more chilled, mm -hmm. to be able to move flexibly and fluidly through those states and to have our capacity for meeting those states grow. Mm -hmm. What happens if we've had trauma when we're not resilient and we've had too much trauma potentially is that we get stuck. So again, we had those, we talked about at the beginning, the, the, the brittle state of being really rigid, yeah. blocking, yeah. or the collapsed state. And, you know, in, if you think about this in human behavioral terms, somebody who's very defiant or very no or very negative or somebody who's a doormat, you know, these can be the ways that <clears throat> if our nervous system is not resilient and well regulated, it manifests in our behavior and how we show up in our lives. So to me, and I look, when I look, maybe as a science nerd, you appreciate this too. When I look at a map, it's like a map of the human body. When you mm. take everything else and you just look, especially the vagus nerve, which maybe mm -hmm. we'll talk about or not. It's like, oh, from the brain stem, you know, mm. down into the heart, down into the guts, up into the eyes, into the face. That's like, this is a map of my felt experience of the world. In yeah. My body. Yeah. Such a beautiful 
description, you know, like, like it's such a vivid, you know, description mm. of how it shows up, you know, in our body. So, so then how do you practically teach people, you know, to, to work with this nervous system? What's the practical approach, you know, how right. to utilize this? Okay. So, well, yeah, I mean, you've had a little, you've had a little taste of it in the yoga yeah. classes. So yeah. one of the things that I've really loved about recent research in the neurobiological field is that they've been looking at these practices that have been done for thousands of years within mindfulness traditions, within Zen, within Buddhist traditions, mm -hmm. within monastic, all of them, that they've looked at meditation, they've looked at yoga, they've looked at chanting. What made it come alive for me, even though I'd been practicing them for so long, was when you have a conscious understanding of what is happening on a biological level. So I'll give you an example. When you do a twist in yoga, so we've did yeah. a few of them, and you take your eyes all the way across. So this is something I might do practically. I'll explain why. So we could do this. If you're having um, difficulty processing something and you're stuck in your story, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The area of the brain that helps that to get processed is called the pons, lives at the top of the brain stem. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are familiar with EMDR therapy. Mm -hmm. Yes? Okay. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons why this works, it's replicating rapid eye movement that happens in sleep. We know that our sleep dreaming is when we process and make sense of things and our subconscious mind goes off with this yeah. movement. So when you're doing EMDR, it's almost like I've heard practitioners call it awake dreaming. Mm -hmm. So you're replicating that process that the brain has for sorting through memories, through sorting through stories, et cetera, et cetera, to then make sense of it and file the story away. So practically in a yoga class or in a session with a client and an individual, and there's an active story going on that they're not being able to make sense mm -hmm. of, we can do something as simple as that, mm -hmm. taking a twist, mm -hmm. taking the eyes all the way across, mm -hmm. taking a breath. So the breath is very implicated in vagus nerve and regulation yeah. of the nervous system. You can even do it with me if you want, Selena. I don't know. See how, how it feels. And then you come back. And anyone who's watching, you're welcome to try. Come back across the center line of the body. Turn your head to the other side. Take the eyes with you. We want the eyes uh -huh. to cross. Take a breath. And you just notice, you pay attention. Come back to the center. Beautiful. Do you feel anything from that? Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I already like already feel just that you know, like what 30 seconds for relaxation. Mm. You know? Yeah. Mm. So it's it's doing a lot. I've just got to take this off now. It's doing a lot of what you would do in a traditional yoga class, yeah, for yeah, example, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. doing it with a degree of conscious awareness of intention. That's yeah. even deeper. It's such an exciting time to be in this field because mm -hmm. the contributions of neuroscience to mm -hmm. explaining in this way, oh, it makes sense why mm -hmm. yoga works. The mm -hmm. optical nerves connect to the pons. I do this twist. Mm -hmm. I'm processing. Oh, the pons, wrap it up, you know. And you, the, one of the other reasons I'm so passionate about this is because a lot of people who experience dysregulation, extreme reactions in the nervous system translated into their emotions, they feel like something's wrong with them. They feel yeah. like they don't make sense. Yeah. And as you start to give them these tools and teach them these ways of seeing it, there's yeah. this relief. Oh, mm. of course. Mm. Of course. Mm. Mm. So that's that, you know, I might do that in a class. I might do that in a session with somebody. That's how I would give an ex practical experience of regulating deliberately yeah. the yeah. nervous system. Yeah. And, and, you know, that phrase, our body keeps the score. Yeah. So being able to access that, that cellular memory and working with that, you know. It's exactly. Just, yeah. I was talking with another practitioner just the other day. I said, I feel like I've been given a superpower. Yeah. It's like, it's not that I don't have challenges or I don't have difficulties. And I see it in my clients. These, of course, we're human. They come, but to feel like. Yeah. Okay. 
I can access this and add, this is an opportunity when this happens. And I can, I love how you said it, access that cellular, mem- cellular mm. memory mm. and move, move things. Mm. Cause it's all energy, right? It's like mm. energy through the nervous system, mm. allow it to move. And you don't indulge uh, when you do that, when you have that approach, that somatic approach, you actually don't even have to talk or you don't even have to access the story consciously. Because that's a so beautiful people, point yeah so many people actually don't you know they're scared they don't want to go there they think they have to go there but with this approach you actually don't you utilize the wisdom of your cellular memory this is a very good point there. yeah it's a very good point yeah I have had a lot of people that have considered going into therapy not want to go for that very reason yeah. because oh my god it's going to bring up so much and I'm going to have to talk about this stuff and it's going to hurt And I don't want to. And if it's intense traumatic memory, and we saw this happen in the psychotherapeutic fields, people Mm. bringing out traumatic memory, Mm. not really having the tools and just getting re-traumatized. So the option is there. You're absolutely right. Just to let the energy move without without necessarily having to go to the story. Some cases that's helpful and useful and a good approach. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, yeah, you don't need it. Mm. Great, great, great. Beautiful. So... I'm excited. We are going to be uh, launching a masterclass soon. Yes. So can you tell us more about it? I can. Thank you for asking. It's on Thursday of this week, the 22nd of July. Mm -hmm. I'm based in Perth in Western Australia. So it'll be starting at 7 p.m. my time, which Mm -hmm. over on the East Coast is 9 p.m. And then it's all different times all around the world for people that yeah. will be tuning in. Yeah. I've called this masterclass, the five steps to falling in love with your true self. Wow. And the reason is, yeah. So a lot of people find themselves not very enamored with the reactive, confused or whatever they're experiencing, mm. fearful versions of themselves that rise up. Mm. This approach, a somatic approach is all about turning that on its head and really seeing the love that's coming from your system in that desire to protect you and then understanding when you work with that then you're able to go a little bit deeper and figure out who you truly are underneath all of those beautiful mechanisms that we've developed our protection mechanisms and coping strategies and allow that and once the true self starts to really emerge it's almost impossible not to fall in love with the beauty of a, of an authentic being, you know, I think about yeah. when you meet someone, you're like, oh, she, that person, he's just so genuine, or she just mm-hmm. seems to be so in herself, or, you know, those phrases that we use about people, something about them, when we access that in ourselves, we can generate that warmth towards ourselves. And then our capacity, that whole, like, love yourself, be your best friend happens naturally. So I'll be teaching a lot of mindset tools and concepts and somatic tools and regulation and little journal practices. It is going to be a light touch. It's a master group masterclass series. It's just going to be little tastes like we did, Mm -hmm. giving people just moments of access to, okay, what does it take to actually understand myself, regulate the nervous system, love myself and live like you talked about in the beginning, an empowered way Mm. in the life that I really want for myself. Mm. It's like, you know, it's like fulfilling to that yearning. What I hear the masterclass is like, you know, for me, the way I hear it's like fulfilling on that yearning, you know, to to, uh, tap into your authentic self. And there's nothing more powerful than, you know, tap into it and then own it exactly I used to I don't know if I'm going to use this catchphrase anymore I used to use it but it's um uh oh gosh (laughs) like what was it know your story know who you are own who you are and show who you are oh beautiful yeah and that's this process like so many people are aching to do that and they try and they try and they try another technique and they try another thing and they come up against the reactions yeah you're nodding because we know the story right and we come up against those yeah and we and then we don't have a way through you know and these tools these techniques these in my experience and the work that I've done and I'm, I'm working with people have given new hope to having a way through those key moments yeah. You know, we're not, we don't have to keep sitting back and saying, I'm not going to live the life 
in the you know that I really really want for myself yeah look so uh, that one of the reasons why people go to addictions is because they don't know how to be themselves exactly and, and that's yeah. a great point Selena it's yeah. painful yeah. not to be your authentic self yeah. it's not just about oh fulfill your dreams and mm. you know it's like mm. get out of the misery I'm sorry to say so harshly but you know yeah. get out of the misery of pretending your way through life and mm. not feeling that energy and joy and spark of like being really impassioned and alive when you're in that alignment and you love who you are and you're being who you are and you're okay with that yeah, and you are, you, are, you, are, you feel free to express it in the world. You don't hide. You don't have to hide. Yes. It. Yeah. So what I hear is like from you know uh, uh, what you teach. People can can access to uh, their freedom to yes. be to be themselves. Yes. Can access to freedom. Yeah. Yeah, I think you you yeah. you nail it and spot on, and and the journey yeah. to authenticity is a journey to freedom, and it's yeah. super challenging. I'm not going to pretend that it's easy. We know, mm. this, you know, it's mm. there are ways, and there are many different paths. This is just one of them, but you know, for certain types of people, like you mentioned, and like for myself as well, this particular frame, I think, is just given a belief maybe in that freedom that I didn't see in other modalities prior to coming across the somatic work and the, the understanding of, of how our systems are working and being able to, rather than judge them, and a lot of spiritual tra mm. traditions, there can be this judgment of the human mm. aspect. Mm. And, oh, if this comes up in me, there's something wrong with my practice and I'm not okay. I just had this conversation today with a client. She was like, oh, I've worked on this for years and it's come back. And, you know, and that judgment meant she spun in it and was like rolling in it for hours. I was like, yeah. What if you started from the premise that it's completely fine, that it's beautiful, your nervous system has sensed a threat, it's yeah. come to your defense, it's just a little bit misguided, we just want to redirect it. Yeah. You know, how much quicker might you come out of that state with that, yeah. mm. that frame? Great. And so, so the masterclass, it's a, a group work, but uh, you, like from my understanding, uh, you know, uh, of how you work you, you primarily do one-to-one -one work yeah that's right that right? Uh -huh. that's right so because mm -hmm. deep trauma work is a very tender process yeah, yeah. so yeah. I tend to at the moment I'm really wanting to provide the service for people I, I had a, a a person come to me the other day who's working with me who is a professional themselves and who knows, it's time. You know, you kind of get to that stage where it's time. I got to go deep. Mm. And when you're going deep, you want the safety of a container of one person who you deeply, deeply trust and it's nervous system to nervous system. So I'm wanting to, to make that experience available, but I'm wanting to make the hope, I guess, of what it is more widely accessible. So more people can yeah. have a little bit of a taste of it. And if they get inspired, you know, I want to go deeper, they, they can look up, they can work with me, they can look it up mm -hmm. online, I'll put some resources about, you know, yeah. where the source of all this work is, mm -hmm. and how to do that, that deeper recovery work. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I not, wanted to say, yeah. yeah, not everyone might be ready right away. But you know, they can experience a bit of what's possible. And then when they're ready, they know they can come to you. So That's right. Yeah. And you're absolutely yeah. right. The yeah. tools can be used just to manage better as well, even yeah. if that's your orientation. I just want to be not quite so freaked out in my day-to-day -day life, you know? I just mm -hmm. want to regulate. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go into the trauma. But like we said before, even with these tools, you'll be healing the trauma. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily have to go into the deep stories and dig it out and heal it, you know, just by attending to the nervous system. You're going to be nourishing your system in a way that will be healing, that will be regulating, that will help things be a little bit smoother. And look, in these times, like, you know, we say that these difficult times for the whole world, you know, we say the virus is contagious, but stress is contagious mm -hmm. too, you know, so to have this, some of these tools and to learn, you know, how to protect your energy, you know, would be invaluable. Yeah. 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 No, you don't have to, if you're that. not ready, you don't have to go into, you know, a deep work. Absolutely. 
And 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 you are also running uh, uh, yoga classes, which I Thanks absolutely love. Uh, yeah, and, you. you know, and I've seen some of the techniques that you teach. And for me, it's like doing yoga with you. It's like, you know, like being in the zone. It's like being in the flow, you know, the, your techniques. Like, when, you know, one day when I was doing it, it was like, a, wow, I just get what it means to be in the zone, you know. Yeah. So I love that. So tell us a bit more about that. Well, I love it. And I haven't even used the word yet, embodied, right? So my method is embodied living, embodied leading. And as you beautifully said at the beginning. And so that's exactly in, in a movement class, mm -hmm. we get to practice the states of being as experienced through the nervous system, because we're doing things, we're taking actions that are very regulatory. Yeah. We're doing breath. We may, we may be chanting, we're moving, we're breathing, we're being present. There is an incredible this just gets my science brain all super tingly. When you simply like mindfulness, when you pay attention mm. to an area of the body, mm -hmm. your system rewards you by sending out um, endorphins into the body. You get a shower of feel good neurochemicals oh just by paying God. attention to your, we are built to do this. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. on a on a biological level, mm -hmm. so that's what being in the class gives you. It gives you that taste. That's why people love yoga so much. You get mm -hmm. that taste of feeling good in your body. You've been present to your body. You've been with the breath. The nervous system has built that flexibility. And for me, it's about being because life isn't static and still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing yeah, it yeah. in a constant motion. Okay, yeah. how do I maintain this flexibility, this balance as I move? as things come at me, as the poses get harder, as we build life, you know, like challenges mm. in life. Mm. And I try to do those very small. So a similar thing when I'm doing a group class to track the individual nervous systems mm -hmm. of people in a class, mm -hmm. I, I tend to limit my classes to about five or six people because mm -hmm. it's just, I can't track Mm -hmm. If we're going to do work that's intentionally giving yeah. that flow experience, it's intentionally healing. Yeah. So for people that are seeking those safer spaces, because I know a lot of my friends have like looked for classes and the people that have been coming to me are like, I don't want to sit. It's, it's very, it's very vulnerable place sometimes yeah. and exposing place. Yeah. And unfortunately some of what's happened in the modern yoga world is looking sexy in your designer label pants right and yeah. so some people that's not where they are they don't feel comfortable with that so to come to a group class I get everyone to know each other so there's community which is part of regulating the nervous mm -hmm. system mm -hmm. and uh, and we work that way mm -hmm. on, on, a, on a slow subtle level mm -hmm. and um, uh, like your communities uh it's all about being authentic. Yes. <laughs> Not to worry about the labels you're wearing. It's about mm -hmm. tapping into your authentic self. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I used to put a sign on, all of you is welcome here. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then we bring our full selves. Beautiful. So can you give us an example of some of your work, what you have seen, uh, you know, happen for people? Can you think yes. of an example like that? Yeah, that would be great. great. So I mentioned one before. Um, I won't talk about her because we've just started working. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've taken um, recently a client came to me because she was having a lot of difficulty with sleep and we did do a little bit of story work. So sometimes it is really helpful for me to understand people's backgrounds and context. And uh, she'd had trauma with an abusive relationship in the past. And that kind of experience leaves the nervous system in a particular kind of condition. Yeah. She wanted to figure out, she's quite, this, she's quite advanced, already done a lot of self-development work before, and she wanted to figure out, I'd like to meditate because I know that I can actually regulate my nervous system better and find, but I'm not finding calm when I meditate. I'm mm -hmm. finding agitation. Mm -hmm. So how do I get through this? I'm not sleeping. I can't calm myself down. So that's, you know, if I hear a story like that, I'm already starting to go, okay, I'm mapping out the coordinates of where that nervous system might be stuck. Yeah. So in, in with her, with this particular case study, what we need to do, and this is something I will be teaching a little bit in the masterclass, 
is that if you've had that trauma and you're noticing that you're anxious a lot of the time when you go quiet and you're in a more internal space, it's probably something in the network of the brain mm. that's been a bit disconnected and there's no safe space inside. Mm. So meditation ain't going to feel good. If you go inside and it's chaos in there or it's harsh violence in there, you're not going to want to do it. Mm. So we worked towards building an experience and you've had people interfering with your experience of safety. We built an experience for her of internalized safety through imagining. We did some imagination exercises, we did guided meditation, we did a little bit of like what we did, a bit of movement and found a way to access for in her mind. Okay. Mm. What is a relationship that represents that beautiful warmth and safety? What does that feel like in my body? And then how can I start to create that by myself, generate it, infuse it into my body so that when I need it, you know, there it is. Okay. The stress is calm and she's right now she's going through more stress work situation, relationship situation. And it's like, ah, okay. I can come to this place. I can regulate my nervous system any decision I then make and now she's ready she's like it's good stress the stresses that are happening I've got a new job and it's really exciting and you know but even Mm. that can be impactful so she's able yeah so she's been able to meet the additional to to grow and to stretch Mm. and to meet those challenges of her life Mm. Mm. so she has stepped into her resilience (laughs) she has (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah look thank you so much thank you so much for sharing yourself and that's 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 the thing about you uh mira you're just so generous oh, <laughs> you know it's just so it's such a beautiful uh, thing to be around you you know it's, you're not just technically amazing <laughs> you know you're wise you're generous and Aww. it's just that that's very healing energy Oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh, that's very kind words. Yeah. So if people are interested in seeing a little bit more about, you know, a, a little bit more of the material that you, uh, that, you know, of the work that you do, how would yeah. they get in touch with you? So what I can do is pop down my website details. It's yeah. pretty simple. It's name M-I-R-A. R-A-O, seven letters, dot com, dot A-U. Yeah. And at the moment, there's a landing page there. It'll um, offer a sign up and there's some information about the course, but that'll just automatically pop people's name on the mailing list. Yeah. So they'll get more information. They, I'll put my um, socials down there as well. So they can find me on social media if they just want to see stuff like, what is this? Or people are welcome to just contact me through you or send me a DM. As you said, I'm very open. So I just want... I want people to get the benefit of, you know, learning these skills and learning this work. But yeah, through the website at the moment, it's the best way after I got hacked, (laughs) as you know. (laughs) I had a bit of a a funny thing with uh, um, Instagram myself. I think someone hacked my Instagram. Let's talk about that offline. I'll give you some help. Talk about it offline. So I'll meet uh, some regulating of my nerves. (laughs) (laughs) Since you have done it so beautifully after, you know, what happened with you and your social media. Yeah. Thank you. So thank you so much. And, you know, uh, yeah, if you want to get in touch with Mira, you have all those links and, uh, you know, just feel free to get in touch and get more information and take it from there beautiful thank you beautiful bye everyone bye